the Apollo 11 VR experience was produced as a partnership between uh, the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences and the iCinema Centre for Interactive Cinema Research at the University of New South Wales. MASS provided the content knowledge uh, and technical knowledge of um, the Apollo 11 mission and UNSW did the visual effects and the actual coding of the immersive experience. The story we wanted to tell was the little known story of Michael Collins, the pilot of the, the Columbia command module. So it's kind of a, a, a gamified simulation of uh, what Michael would have been doing as the pilot of the command module. And at various points in the experience, uh, Houston uh, Mission Control will talk to you as Michael Collins to uh, ask you to perform some of the tasks that he performed. Um, but we didn't want to have complex interfaces, so it's all by gaze, uh, all by your sight, where you look and how you look. And uh, um, we try to encourage people to, to do these things through spatial cues in the virtual world, whether that's um, something visual like a blinking light or a 3D audio moment or um, a, a direct command from um, a, a voice actor. I saw like uh, so many buttons and awesome. We used two great data sets, one from the Smithsonian Institution who gave us a wonderful high resolution laser scan of the Columbia command module. This laser scan gave us amazing details of both the interior and the exterior of the module, including uh, tiny little textures and buttons and widgets and things that you would uh, never otherwise see. We also had the flight recordings from NASA that uh, we were able to see exactly what the communications were between Houston and Columbia throughout the, the important parts of the, the mission. Designing for virtual reality is a very difficult task because you're trying to replace people's senses with the virtual world. It's even more difficult for museums because you can't control for your audience. You have to design a system that will be legible to 10-year-olds as well as 90-year-olds. And so you can't rely on complex interactive schemes. You can't use controllers or paddles or, you know, 10 minutes of instruction and onboarding. So museums face particular challenges like how do you manage the flow of people who want to use your um, installation? How do you protect a, a virtual reality installation for six months from a thousand school children? How do you manage the, the safety risks? How do you uh, design something of best practice with limited resources? So we're only in the early stages of figuring out how museums can use immersive technologies, even though they offer huge potential for the future.